Hello everyone, welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is priority-based batch scheduling. Uh, my name is Otto, I'm your technical moderator today. Uh, we're broadcasting today's session through Teams Live Events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. Uh, the session is going to be recorded today on the behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Uh, when you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. Uh, by joining, you're agreeing to that experience. Uh, the recording itself will be available over on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within about five business days. Uh, if you happen to have any questions for our presenters or need support, feel free to go ahead and use that Q&A panel located on the right-hand side of the screen, and our presenters will be responding uh, to your questions throughout the event. Thanks for your patience during these brief announcements. Uh, so presenting for us today from Microsoft, uh, we've got uh, Ajay Kumar Singh, uh, Senior R&D Solutions Architect. And with that, Ajay, over to you. Oh, thanks, Otto. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are joining. Uh, today's topic is priority-based batch scheduling, and I've been joined with my colleague, Akshat Singh, Program Manager in the Fast Tech team, Harsh Birla, Senior R&D Solution Architect in the Fast Tech team. We have Matak Prasad, uh, Senior Program Manager from the Dataverse team. Let's get started. So uh, the agenda for today's is the background. So we will be talking about the limitation of the current batch runtime framework. Then uh, in overview, we will talk about what is priority-based batch scheduling, what are the advantages of having priority-based batch scheduling, how does it work, uh, and then uh, the prerequisites for the PBS uh, or priority-based batch scheduling. We will also talking about the best practices and call to action. Okay, so background. Uh, so there are certain limitations that we have seen in the current batch runtime framework. So one of the key one is that the current, uh, there's a high content on, on the batch related tables that we have seen, uh, seen uh, since AX 2012. So there's a two table, batch and batch job table, which is kind of maintaining the queue for my batches, right? So the batch in waiting, executing, and finishing. So we have seen and high contention blocking and the deadlock on those tables. So we had a feature introduced in few 21, uh, the batch content and reduction feature, which has kind of an alleviated that uh, content and the number has significantly went down after that feature. However, we still see uh, there is a high content on the batch related tables. The, uh, the other thing that we have seen as a limit on the current runtime is that there is a no way for me to prioritize a batch job. So example, I have set up batch jobs and I want to make sure that one batch job should be getting highest resource allocated at the time when, when it executes. Uh, there's no way for us right now in the current framework to do that. The way we have been doing it is by adjusting my batch groups and dedicating certain number of batch server or threads. The disadvantage of doing that is that my batch servers are not evenly utilized. So if you just look at uh, as an admin over 24 hours, how your batch server is being utilized, how many threads that you have been using, and since I have certain priority jobs, which is going to run at certain time in a day, and if I do a dedicated allocation of certain resources to a batch group, my batch server is going to sit idle uh, the rest of the time when it's not executing anything. So if you just look at 24 by 7, what it gives us is that we are not evenly utilizing or we're not better utilizing the underlying infrastructure that we got. The other thing that we see is there is no way to do the reserve capacity. So Today, if I want to reserve certain number of threads for my highest uh, priority ba batch, there's no way to do that. The way we have been doing it, that get a batch group, assign to a batch server, and keep it only for the priority batch that they wanted to. And again, that will lead to uh, a kind of a server not being utilized the rest of the time. And the other thing that we see is that the current framework that we have, the, the batch groups are tightly integrated with the batch server. So at any point of time, if we decide to add more nodes to your batch server or remove it uh, because of any regions, um, 
we can do it from the back end but what it leads to is that you need we need to send a notification to customer and partner that hey we have added a new node looking at your uh, workload and you need to start using that and you can start using that by adding uh, or changing your current batch group configuration to start using the batch server right so there is a communication that needs to happen uh, in terms of you know sending out the notification to the customer and master the customer and partner the other thing that we have is near zero downtime so i don't know if you guys are aware, all aware that we have a concept of near zero downtime so basically what we do is that for the windows os patching which we do uh, every third week of every month right and we ask for the customer and partner to provide a downtime for us to do that patching this can be done in the near zero downtime fashion which means that there will be a flip or in a very brief period of you know uh, interruption and then we can patch it so we don't need a dedicated downtime that we have been asking today and this can this cannot be done today uh, looking at the current infrastructure because our batch groups are tied with our batch server so at any point of time if i take one batch server off from my batch group then uh, any batch group that is assigned to that batch server is not going to execute it's going to either error or it's going to wait until the batch server is back so these are the kind of limitations that we have with the current uh, batch framework now what is pbs um, so in platform update 31 we introduced the concept of priority based batch scheduling so basically what it does is that it decouples your servers from the batch group so basically once you turn on the pbs uh, you don't you no longer need to assign your batch group to batch server so it's kind of uh, your batch the PBS allow you to define the priority at the batch group and and the PBS platform itself or the framework will use uh, you know the batch group that you have assigned to your uh, batch party that we have assigned to the batch group to execute on the available uh, you know the pool of resources so you are no longer assigning a batch group to the server based on the priority in the PBS engine will pick up the batch job from the corresponding group look at the priority and execute from the available resources uh, the other thing is that now we talked about that with PBS priority based batch scheduling I'm going to set up priority at the batch group level however if you want to overwrite that at a particular batch job level that is also doable so so example you have a batch job batch you have a batch group you set the priority at, at uh, a priority x or low or high or critical which we'll be talking about later so you set a priority and you have 10 batch jobs within that batch group which is running on the same priority inherited from the batch group now at some time you decided to change one batch job to, to run on different priority because of any business region you have an option to move that batch job out from the batch group and move to the corresponding batch group which has that priority that you wanted to however if you want to keep in the same batch group you can go and override that at the batch job level so essentially with the pvs we are setting the priority at the batch job level batch group level but we have a capability to overwrite at the batch job level. Now, with the with PBS, um, it's kind of an, it aligns or setting up a batch job's priority based on the business processes and the need. So, in the legacy or in the previous platform, what you used to do is that if you wanted to run something like high critical or like you know we want to run something a critical job, the business user was reaching out to admin, hey, create a new batch group, dedicate some servers for me to run this like the month-end process right so this kind of thing that you have to kind of go back to your admin and do all these prerequisites and do assign some batch server now with pbs you can just use the highest highest priority that you have uh, at the time of scheduling a batch job. so you don't need to go and talk to the admin and do the batch server and the group alignment so that's kind of an you know it's more of a business a business driven um, a batch batch execution and setting of the priority than earlier we used to do as a predefined batch server and the batch group so when we turn on the PBS, so we have five different priority for the batch jobs. So we have low, normal, high, critical, and reserve. Reserve is the highest priority uh, in, in the batch scheduling. Now, the way the our polling logic works with priority-based batch scheduling is that it's going to pick up, you know, batch tasks that's to be executed based on the priority from the queue and execute it. So the benefit that we get is that at any point of time, right, if one server is not available right now and in the previous, uh, you know, platform or the legacy platform of the batch, 
But if the one server is down because of any reason, any batch job that is assigned to that batch server will be blocked either in either in error state or it will wait until the batch server is back online. With PBS, right, since it's not tightly coupled, it will, it's going to pick up uh, the available pool of batch batch servers and assign that batch to run based on the priority. And we talked about the near zero downtime. So with PBS having turned on, uh, it allow us to do the near zero downtime servicing because I can take uh, a setup batch server for the patching while uh, the another setup batch servers are still available serving the batch job that is supposed to run that time. Now, just look at the advantages that we talked about having PBS and um, with PBS and before PBS. So you can see here that we are setting up batch groups and then we are assigning those batch groups to the batch server. We can do one to many or one to one. So we can assign a batch group to a dedicated batch server or we can have one batch group running on the multiple batch servers. So that's our previous setup. With priority based batch scheduling, I don't need to no longer I no longer need to do that configuration part. I will have the batch group and I'll set up the priority and priority based batch scheduling framework or engine will decide which batch server to use and to process uh, the any available batch job based on their priority. So there's no pre-configuration that we need to do uh, the way we have been doing it in the past. Now, how does this priority-based batch scheduling works, right? So, so the way uh, we have designed this priority-based batch scheduling that you can see here in the pyramid that we have 40% uh, you know, uh, weightage. So this is not an absolute number. So this is not the number of threads being assigned to reserve capacity. It's not number of 30 threads going to be assigned to the critical, high, normal, and low. This is a weightage system that we have put in. So there will be always 40% weightage given to the area of capacity, which is the highest uh, in my priority, 30% weightage to the critical, which is the second highest, then 15% weightage to, to high, 10% weightage to normal, and 5% weightage to the low priority bad job. So the way the priority based batch scheduling works is that when we when we have the PBS turned on and I have like you know uh, you know the task waiting for for me to be executed by PBS, the batch scheduler uh, there's an uh, there's an service that runs batch scheduler. What it will do is that it will pick up all the waiting tasks or ready to execute tasks from my batch job and batch batch and batch job table. It will pick up those tasks, create five um, table in CAS. So these these are not actual physical table. These are the table in CAS or in memory table that you can call it. So we create five, um, five, uh, five different tables or CAS table where we the, the scheduler will assign those bad jobs based on their priority to the five different uh, tables and then mark their weightage. So for critical, mark 40. Similarly for the, uh, sorry, the critical for 30, reserve for 40, and the respective others. So that marking will be done by the scheduler. Then. Uh, the folder that runs on each server will go and pick up the task from the corresponding queue based on their priority and execute it. So if I just give an example of, you know, I have 100 tasks to be executed from each uh, each priority. So I have 500 tasks, 100 from low, 100 from normal, 100 for high, 100 from critical, and 100 from reserve capacity. So at any point of time, you will see the polar, the way it works is that uh, like we say that it's not an absolute number. So it's not means like, you know, if I have 10 batch servers and 10 threads each, so total I have 100 threads. That does not mean that uh, out of 100, 40 threads is going to, going to be only servicing my reserve capacity. It works, uh, so it's not an absolute number. So the, the point here is that it's a weightage system. So basically, if I go to the next slide, so you see this is the inner workings of PBS. So what a scheduler is doing is that it's, based on looking at my batch job and batch tables, picking up the task that is ready to be executed and putting into the uh, five different tables, which we've marked as a different corresponding priority and assign the weightage. The PBS folder, it is kind of service running on each batch server. So what it does is that it's gonna pull. So basically if you just go back and look at the way it works is that it's kind of a, uh, rolling up the dice, right? So, so example, uh, so the PBS from AOS 1 is going to pull the number of tasks. So what it's going to do is that it's going to run a dice of 100 faces, right? And based on the weightage where I have a reserve capacity is 40. So 
out of 100 faces, 40 faces is, is of reserve capacity. Then I have 30 faces is for critical. Then I have 15 faces for my high. Then I have 10 faces from for my normal and five faces from low. So at any point of time, if the polar is rolling the dice, the chances of getting a reserve capacity is always high because I have 40 faces. So basically that number that we talked about the weighted, it is it's increasing the probability of executing a bad job from the corresponding priority. So there is always high cap, high probability of executing, uh, you know, reserve capacity. And then um, critical normal. So the way it works is that it's going to roll the dice. It's going to pick up, hey, I, I roll the dice and I got reserve capacity. It will go and pick up that pending task on the reserve capacity if there is any. If there is no pending task on the reserve capacity, it will roll the dice again and pick up based on the next phase that is coming up. So there is one business advantage that you will see here. On the legacy framework or the previous batch framework, what was happening is that if you have 100 threads and you got a bad job, maybe it's low priority, and that bad job is running, it's going to occupy all 100, right? And unless that is finishes, you cannot have another bad job which is coming as a critical or is coming as a high. It's not going to it's going to get the resources. With PBS, what you will see, and over the period, if you see it right, you will see that you know out of 100 tasks that I have or 100 threads that I have few tasks based on uh, the way this rolling happens right so you'll see that when the critical and high are executing there is a st still some resources assigned to uh, to the low priority bad job so you have you have 100 uh, and if you just look at uh, a brief period of time for maybe a uh, 20 minutes 30 minutes or an hour and if you look at the badge history you would see that you know your low also got executed, maybe five tasks only. And at the same time, you have critical, which got executed with 40 tasks because that's the, the weighted that we have set it up. Now, uh, we talked about the reserve capacity, which is the highest uh, in terms of um, uh, our, our priority. So the one thing to note here, right, that weightage that we talked about, which is 40% for the reserve capacity, then we have 30 for the critical. This weightage system is, it's not configured by user. This is managed by the platform itself. However, uh, for the reserve capacity, when you turn on the PBS, we have given an option to go and override how much you want to reserve the capacity. So example, um, if, when you turn on the PBS and if you go to the system administration module setup, uh, and there's a system parameter forms, which is all existing form that we have. And if you go to that form, there's a new tab appears which will, which is allowing you to do the reserve capacity. I can go for none. So if I go for none, so I'm not doing any reserve capacity. If I go for low, I'm going to do 10% of my resources for the reserve capacity. I can go medium, I can go high. So, so what we see on the parameter is low, high, medium, and none. This low, high, medium, none is kind of mapped with a percentage of the thread that I'm going to reserve for the reserve capacity. And this is, this is not here, the number that you see, but it's been there in the doc. So you can go and refer to the doc where the, there you can kind of correlate the percentage. So what happens uh, with the reserve capacity is that, say example, I have 10 batch server, 10 thread each, so total 100 threads, right? And I said, okay, I want to do a high reserve capacity. So I want to reserve 25% of thread for my reserve capacity badger. And so what will happen is that the PBS scheduler will reserve 25 threads. So this is and the number of threads. The weightage system is not actually a threads. It's a kind of increasing the probability. Here I'm reserving number of threads. So basically, if I set a reserve capacity level to high, and if I have 100 threads, so it's going to reserve 25. So the way scheduler works is that the scheduler will go and look at the parameter and if this finds that, hey, uh, I have to reserve 25% for the for reserve capacity, it will go look at the very first AOS available from the pool and see that, okay, I need to reserve 25. How many you have the number of threads available? You see that I have 10 threads, it will reserve all 10. Then the scheduler goes to the next AOS from the pool and looks at it, how many threads. So I have 15 remaining. It will go and look at how many threads that I have. AOS 2 also have 10 threads, so it will reserve the remaining 10. Now, I still I have 5 threads that I need to reserve for my reserve capacity. It will go to the third AOS, and it will look for, okay, how many threads that you have, and the third AOS will say that I have 10 threads, 
Okay, these are five for the reserve capacity. So the total 25, like uh, the full AOS 1, full AOS 2, and half of the reserve, uh, AOS 3 is reserved for the reserve capacity. So the reserve capacity does not go and reserve five, five, and five different servers. It does like from, from first uh, AOSs from the pool. The reason we do it to minimize, uh, you know, uh, the time or uh, the polar to go and pull and for each server and see how many you have reserve capacity. We want to reserve first few and give that to the reserve capacity because we want to treat reserve capacity batch priority the highest. So minimize any sort of pulling or any sort of mechanism to go for me to go and find the right resources. So that's how the reserve capacity works. Uh, we can also go and say no reserve capacity. Maybe there is a situation that you have in your organization that you don't need to have any reserve capacity. You want to have only critical, high, normal, and low. You don't want to have. Because if you go reserve capacity, then that percentage of resources is going to sit idle. It's not going to be utilized by anyone other than reserve, reserve capacity pool. But that's kind of framework that, that we have kind of provided. Now, the, uh, the other thing with the reserve capacity is that uh, is that the way it works, right? So, so you have, let's say example, you did a 25% reserve capacity, which means that you deserve 25 threads. Uh, that is being reserved for them. And now you got, uh, let's say example, you got uh, 40 threads that is needed for reserve capacity. So what it's going to do is that it's going to use first 25 on the reserve capacity pool. And then the remaining 15 is going to take up from the highest, right? Even above the critical. So. So the way it works, right? Because the way to the, for the remaining one, the dice rolling will happen and the 40% is for the job capacity. So it's going to use the remaining 75 threads that you have from there. So that's that's the way the reserve capacity works. So if I have more threads than I have reserved, it will pick up from the remaining pool. If I have less thread from uh, than I reserved, for example, I have 25% reservation, but I have only 20 threads. So the five threads are going to sit idle. They're not, they're not going to be used. Uh, now, uh, prerequisites for PBS. Um, so one of the prerequisites that we have for the PBS is to turn on the batch content and reduction feature, which I talked about, uh, we introduced in uh, Pew 28 or 21. Now, what is happening right now with, with Pew 47 or 10, 23, uh, this is by default turn on for all customers. So uh, this, fe uh, this feature is already turned on. Uh, however, right, you will still have a uh, way or capability to go back and disable it, right? And if you have done, if you have disabled it, then you will have to turn it on for you to start using PBS. Because if you go try to and turn on PBS, and if that feature is turned off, it will give you a warning. Uh, batch enhanced form. So if you go, so right now in, in the current framework, we have a way to switch back between the legacy form and the enhanced batch form. Again, enhanced batch form has much more flexibility and and an option compared to the legacy one, but you have an option to switch back between legacy and the enhanced one. When you turn on PBS, uh, that, um, that flexibility is gone. So you no longer have an ability to switch to legacy. You'll be only using the enhanced, uh, enhanced batch form. So that's a kind of the prerequisite or after effect of the having PBS. So when PBS, when we turn on PBS, all the bad jobs that you have currently in your, your environment, it's going to be transferred to a normal batch priority. So that's the default that happens. So at any point of time, you turn on the PBS, within a few seconds, right, it's going to be transferring all the batch jobs to the normal priority. Um, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if you just go back and today and look at, there's a batch job, it's called system job to seed batch group association to batch job. So that's the batch job responsible for for, for transferring my, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the batch groups to the normal batch part. So that's, that's the uh, change that happened when you turn on the PBS. And then I'll have a quick demo where we'll be kind of showing up the features and different formats and combination of PBS. Thanks, Ajay. Uh, my name is Harsh Birla. I work with Microsoft Fast Track team as senior R&D solutions architect. Let's take a quick demo of uh, priority based batch scheduling. Uh, so I'm into a sandbox where I have four AOSs. If you can see in server configuration, uh, each batch AOS uh, I have set up 
10 maximum batch threads, right? So if you look at AOS 1, AOS 2 has uh, 10 batch threads, similarly AOS 3 and 4. So overall, uh, I have capacity to run 40 threads concurrently in this particular environment. From feature management, uh, I have already enabled priority-based batch scheduling feature. So once this feature is enabled, uh, you will see a different experience on batch group, right? So there is no more association of batch group and batch servers anymore once you enable priority-based batch scheduling feature from feature management. So if you look at batch groups, uh, now all my existing batch group, for example, MD or batch, uh, these have been assigned normal uh, scheduling priority, right? So you can see these are my bad jobs. For example, you know, I have alerts, email distribution, retail jobs, etc. All uh, were using empty batch group and now they have normal scheduling priority. So you can actually see uh, all the bad jobs which uh, are scheduled to run or ended from, from this screen. Uh, Similarly, what, what we have done is created new batch groups called critical and assigned scheduling priority as it's critical. Uh, similarly, high batch group uh, for our demo purpose as high, low, and normal, right? So you can see we have four batch groups. Um, now, let me actually show you the setup for reserve capacity. So if you go to system admin and look at uh, system parameters and look at batch global settings. So currently, we have not defined any batch reserve capacity, right? It's no. So there is no dedicated capacity which is reserved uh, right now. Uh, for this demo purposes, what, what we have done is created a custom batch jobs that introduces a kind of sleep pattern. Uh, and then spin up a number of threads based on the parameter. And we can schedule uh, different batch jobs and submit it in different batch groups. So for this demo, what I'm trying to do is, so let me quickly open up my Excel. So we have four AOSs, right, as we talked about. Uh, I'm going to submit this sim simple uh, batch job that we have created. It's a custom and then assign uh, various uh, batch groups like critical, high, normal, and low. We will spin up 50 batch threads. We will schedule them to run at the same time uh, with recurrence one. It's same workload. So what we are expecting, hey, the critical one should get finished and so on and so forth, right? It should finish in least amount of time because we are trying to uh, leverage all the capacity, right? We can a system can run 40 threads in parallel, right? But what we are saying, hey, let's schedule uh, four batches that will that needs uh, 200 batch threads to run, right? So let's quickly submit this batch job. Uh, again, it's custom batch job, so uh, you know I, I'm going to introduce one minute of, one minute of delay, a spin of number of uh, threads is 50, and let's uh, start with low. And let's go to recurrence and we will make it run at 250 in after one and a half minute of time frame, right? So low is scheduled. Same one minute delay, 50 threads, and then normal. And we'll start this at the same time, 12.50 p.m. Then, uh, hi. and one more for critical. 
and to run to start at the same time. Uh, so let's go to batch groups. So you see critical batch job is waiting. Right now I will go inside it so we can see the execution for critical. Currently it is waiting. Uh, hi. So if you notice the time has started. So let me refresh this. So you see critical has already started uh, around 26 best threads are being executed. Similarly, uh, for high system has started picked up executing some of the best tasks. Let me go to normal. It's also executing because the time is same for all of them. So you see in number of best tasks, it has created 50, but out of 50, it is executing four. And let's go to low. It's also started, but because the priority is low, uh, all the tasks are in ready state, but only three are executing, right? So the highest priority and resources are being provided to critical. Right, you see uh, 26 set being executed. Okay. Yeah, so let's give it a minute for it to complete, right? And if you notice for the critical, it has already completed some of the tasks, half of the task, and it's currently working on the remaining half, right? So what we are expecting, the critical one should get uh, uh, the highest priority when you actually submit the same workload, same bad jobs to start at the same time, right? Okay. Let's take a quick look at why. Still executing some of them. I'll take a pause and then um, you know, we'll take a look at execution. Okay, so our batch jobs are executed now. So if you see the critical batch job started, actually start time, date and time, and then end date time. So it took around three minutes, 17 seconds. Similarly, uh, and let me close it so you can actually see uh, for from the batch group screen directly. Uh, so critical, it was executed and it completed, right? The critical one, if I refresh the screen, you can actually go to job ID and look at the job history screen to get actual date and time, right? So this is critical. Similarly, this is the experience for high. It took four minutes, uh, 19 seconds uh, for normal, and for uh, for the low, right? So the low priority bad job took the longest time, right? Which is what we expected. So if I go to my Excel and analyze, um, you know, this took the least time because it's uh, obviously critical priority and low took the highest time, uh, which is what we expect, right? Uh, now, if you currently, if you look at in system parameters, we don't have any reserve capacity, uh, but once we assign reserve capacity in system parameters, so if I assign some high reserve capacity, that means 25% of my capacity will be reserved to execute some of the dedicated batch, right? What we need to do is basically assign and create a new batch group. So currently we have critical, high, low, normal. And if we are looking at reserved capacity, then 
we need to use reserve capacity as a scheduling priority, right? So, so currently what I've done is in the system, we have a high reserve capacity. That means what we are saying, hey, reserve 25% of my capacity. That means 10 threads. So one AOS will not execute, only we will have capacity to run 30 for critical high, normal and low. And for reserve group, uh, we will leverage uh, reserve batch group, right, to run. So if now I schedule, again, do the similar exercise, right, to run the batch groups, right? So right now, since, I, since we have only 30 threads available for, uh, for batch jobs, right, except reserve capacity. So 75% is my capacity, which is available. That means 30 threads. So even critical will take longer because I have less capacity, right, from a batch group perspective. So I will go ahead and schedule some batch jobs and then show you the results of, uh, uh, you know, of using batch batch. Uh, batch group with reserve capacity. So what I'm going to do is again use the same So let's do critical batch And we will schedule it to run at after Two minutes, okay, so that I have enough time to actually schedule it so I'll take a pause, I'll submit these batch jobs, and then we will analyze the result. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the various batch jobs. Now we had some of the reserve capacity. So I've a bit late to submit the reserve batch job. So if you look at, it started at 1.450 p.m. and finished uh, within, within four minutes, right? However, the critical batch job started, uh, at, uh, you know, uh, prior to reserve capacity. So if you look at it finished because it got all the resources, all the required capacity at that point in time. However, if you look at the high, uh, it finished right now and it took longer because now, uh, you know, the reserve capacity batch job got the highest priority, uh, right, uh, at that point in time. If you look at the normal one, uh, it took longer, uh, right, almost same time. Uh, and then the low one, I believe it's still executing, right? So uh, that's how you can actually see experience, uh, you know, how the PBS scheduler is using various algorithm to honor these priorities for batch jobs. We also talked about, you know, changing the priority um, on the batch job. So if you go to batch job and you want to actually uh, look at the job ID, yeah. So you can actually edit it. Currently, you know, it's assigned uh, batch group as reserved and it has reserve capacity batches scheduling. However, if you want to override it, you can actually override and say, hey, I want to execute this batch job on a different priority, even though my batch group is different, right? So you can actually uh, override the priority here on the batch job level <clears throat> and save it. Uh, so once you change the status, let's say to waiting, right, for this particular batch job, it will pick up uh, the high uh, capacity uh, for the next execution. Yeah, sir. Thanks, Harsh. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Akshat, um, for the best practices about the um, priority list batch scheduling and um, call to action. Akshat. Thank you, Ajay. 
thank you harsh now in the next slide uh, let's talk about some of the best practices we should follow when we enable uh, priority based batch scheduling feature so first one is uh, please do not assign same priority to all batch jobs like uh, putting everything to high or putting everything to critical because uh, then uh, you are not utilizing uh, the algorithm uh, or the uh, or the problem statement which we are trying to solve here with this new framework. Uh, next best practice is do not schedule same priority jobs to run at same time, like uh, putting all normal bad jobs in the morning, high bad uh, high priority bad jobs in the afternoon. So it's uh, the second point is tightly coupled with the first point. Where if we are doing this, then the actual problem statement where we started to build this framework was to allow the framework to run different priority jobs with their weightage at the same time. So if we are not following that, then we are underutilizing uh, the power of this framework. Now, next best practice is uh, reserve queue. So as mentioned earlier, so reserve queue is there to dedicate a specific number of threads to run the highest critical bad jobs. So if you have any bad jobs which are very, very critical, then utilize the reserved queue. That will work as a dedicated resource for the bad job. Like today, we, we only have the option of creating a bad group and then assigning the servers uh, so that my most critical jobs will run on those servers but uh, now with the reserved capacity you can actually uh, reserve some of the threads to uh, to run your most critical batch jobs now next point is uh, it is recommended to use the same number of threads across all your batch servers to eliminate any any kind of performance issues Another point is, as uh, uh, Ajay has also mentioned previously, that priorities are not used to stack ranked tasks. So it's not tied up. To, so 40%, 25%, this, this is not tied up to the number of batch tasks, but this is weightage or probability, you can say. So a simple example could be if at any moment of time I have 10 threads available and there are 10 tasks mixed across uh, reserved high uh, high normal low priority then the chances of reserved priority is is 40 percent being picked up by by those number of available available threads we have so it's it's uh, definitely not uh, number of threads are not aligned to the weightage now again next best practices uh, each of our ba ba your batch tasks should implement batch retrieval interface to avoid any intermittent issues the major one being uh, sql transient errors now most of our system batch jobs has already this in place so this is more about if you have any uh, custom jobs or custom tasks then yeah it is always recommended to implement this interface so that you can avoid these uh, SQL transient error. So now moving ahead, uh, I will quickly hand it over to Martha to talk about timelines. Thanks, thanks Akshay. Uh, from timeline perspective, I would like to call out uh, three important uh, times here. Uh, this feature was announced uh, uh, on the April 1st as part of the 10.4.25 and we have started seeing many customers have uh, adopting this feature and uh, other two timelines which I would like to call out like this feature will be enabled by default for all the new instances getting created and uh, that is going to be effective from 10.4.28 that is starting July and uh, one fourth critical uh, one uh, timeline which I would like to call out like this feature will be enabled by default for all the existing instances uh, starting 10.0.29. So we do have started seeing that more adoption of for this feature and we recommend to enable in the sandbox and then uh, enable in this broad. And as I mentioned in the previous day, right, this is a prerequisite because in the roadmap, we also have near zero downtime 
servicing like what were the framework we have built we are going to do the in place patching for os uh, updates as well as with the uh, quality updates as well so that's why i would say like we recommend to have this feature as a prerequisite so that way you can get the benefit of all the different types of services what we have in the work market yeah, thank you yeah, thank you martha okay so now call to action so first of all we need to identify the priority of currently running bad jobs second once the feature is available it's already ga so available so you can turn on this feature so once you turn on this feature it will put all the existing bad jobs to normal priority with no reserved capacity then as part of your first step which was to identify the priority the third step is you can go ahead and update the priorities of uh, of your bad jobs or batch groups based on what you have identified as part one and then last one is apply the reserved capacity so if you have highly critical jobs which needs to be run then use the reserve capacity feature to dedicate a specific number of threads for those uh, those critical jobs now so the main call to action is work with your project teams to adopt this pbs because um, this is this is the future it is definitely required for near zero downtime servicing experience and as as soon as you keep using this feature we welcome your issues and feedbacks you can reach us via the dedicated yammer group or through microsoft support or any uh, communities so yeah now this uh, this is it from the presentation so i'm handing it back to oto over to you excellent thank you all righty well um uh i've gone ahead and post a link here to a survey uh, it's a little short survey uh, there in the Q&A panel. Uh, we certainly appreciate the feedback on today's session, uh, what you may like to see in future events. Uh, certainly appreciate your participation there and uh, hope the content uh, today was useful. And um, as a reminder, uh, the recording uh, for today's session will be available uh, over on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page uh, within about uh, five business days. So it uh, looks like there uh, there may be uh, another few remaining questions. I know we do have a couple of minutes uh, of extra time here, um, and uh, looks like we're uh, we're tackling some of these uh, via text there. Uh, Ajay, uh, did uh, do we want to um, address any uh, uh, before we wrap up today? Yeah, I think there are a few questions that we can take. Um, one of the questions currently is. Will it be a mandatory feature in the future? Yes. So as uh, Mata just spoke about, right? So from 29 onwards, so we are going to enable for all customers, right? Uh, however, uh, the making it mandatory on the kind of, you know, we will follow our guidelines that we have for the feature deprecation. But yes, that's in the roadmap. Yeah. Right. Uh, there is a, another question, uh, Ajay. When a server goes down for maintenance, does it finish all its pending threads before it goes down or it still pauses those? Yeah, so it's not going to pause. So whenever a server goes off from the pool, so we make an entry for all the tasks that we're running. And if those tasks were marked as an item potent, and when the server is back or when there's an available threads, so those item potent tasks will be kind of, you know, uh, getting, uh, I would say, restarted. And, and then there's a retry flag on the batch task will be marked with, uh, you know, uh, the number of retry that we made. So example, I start with a zero. If I did once, then I'll mark it at once. And I can do until only five. So until five, if I don't restart, and because of any other circumstances, then the batch will error. Uh, but technically, if the one server goes off, the batch will go back and to like we maintain a pool, and from there we'll just kind of restart the batch job using our retry framework that we have, which is which is not the uh, the 
the retrieval framework. It's an item potent that we configure for the bad jobs. Yep, makes sense. Um, that's one more question. What will be the priority of bad jobs which are not assigned to any batch group? So, uh, so like I said, uh, so if the badge job is not assigned to any batch group, which means that is going to go to the normal, right? Uh, empty batch group, right? So by the so anytime you you turn on the PBS, all existing batch groups are going to assign to the normal priority, including our empty batch groups. So if you're not defining a batch group uh, for a batch job, it's going to go to the you go and use empty batch group, and if empty is assigned to the default normal, then it's going to run in the normal. However, if you want to have empty as a different priority, you have an option to go and change the priority for even empty batch group. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Th therefore, I think it's 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 good to analyze right? hey, which batch jobs are running against the empty batch group because each batch job job runs against of any batch group, right? It could be yeah. empty batch group that comes by default, right? Yeah, so there are a few scenarios just to mention out here, right? Is that like MRP, your inventory closing, where you define the helper threats, right? So normally all the badge up that we have designed, it's going to use uh, the threat from the parent. So example, if I run an MRP with the 10 helper threats, it's going to use the badge group that I use for the MRP main thread, right? It's going to use the same, same badge group, and then it's going to follow the same priority. However, right, there is a scenario uh, like uh, you know, the process automation framework that we introduced, right? It uses empty batch group. So you need to work on your empty batch group. I want to set the priority. Or if you are submitting a batch job from the code, right? Using Express logic and not giving an option to user to define a batch group, then in that case, normally we go and use the empty batch group. If you are doing that, and if your business needs to have a different priority for empty batch group, definitely go and change the priority of empty batch group. Yeah. Um, one more question, Ajay, I see is how's the batch priority weighted against critical job? So the batch priority against the critical job. So I think the weight is that we have defined, right? It's a 40% for, for my reserve capacity, right? And then 30% for my critical. So at any point of time, there will be 30% chances to pick up from, from the critical even though whether I'm using reserve or not. So if I have a reserve capacity set up, right, I'm reserving the average of threat, but if I don't have reserve capacity set up, I have all 100 threads available, but the 30% is going to be getting to the critical one uh, compared to the other. So I, we have seen that in example, right, when I had all four running at the same time, and if you just look at the end of the day, the number of tasks executed and the priority given to the critical was highest compared to the others, though all were running at the same time. Thanks, Jen. Uh, and the last question I see, what would be your recommendation and guidance in defining what is the definition of a critical batch job so that we can explain this to business users? Yeah, so, you know, if I'm a business user, everything is critical for me, right? Because I want everything to be finished on highest priority compared to the others, right? That's kind of a normally it happens, right? Uh, that if I'm given a problem, you know, an option that we, what priority I wanted to use, I'll use critical for everything. However, the guidance, like uh, we don't have an any, any specific, but just looking at the business priority and the customer that we have worked with. So example, my retail statement posting. So for some customers, they need to post the retail statement by 12 in the midnight because they need to do a fresh order in the early morning. If that does not happen, they won't be able to up the order in the morning. For those kind of jobs, definitely setting the critical is mandatory because that needs to be done before a certain point of time. And any resource that I have on whatever the resource that I have, I want to assign to those bad jobs. So that's the kind of a guidance, like, you know, uh, processing payment, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, any sort of, you know, this kind of critical, like uh, processing payment, my retail statement, my any integration job that I want to be finished because there's a trigger mechanism that I need to put in something else uh, after that bad job. So those kind of bad jobs, I would say that following critical would be the recommended. Um, in fact, we have we do have some customers who are using all normal, but that's not a guidance, right? Then we're killing the purpose. Uh, but yeah, I think the critical is mostly I would recommend for you know the time sensitive badge of that you wanted to have, right? Um, because there is uh, there's a downstream process that you need to kick in after that. 
for those kind of jobs we would we suggest to have critical or high uh, reportings like you know reports and all again the guidance to the user that hey uh, you are earning report uh, why it needs to be critical or high right normally use normal i won't even go to the low if i go to the low like in my my year end reportings right like uh, any sort of reporting that i'm doing is going to take let's example uh, you know the vendor customer aging and all that which is going to take time and it's going to take time it's not a mandatory for me to have the report ready today i can submit in the low i can come tomorrow and download the pdf so those kind of jobs go to low but normally i have seen that the people use reporting and all as a normal not low low is very rarely used that i have seen yeah that's kind of an example from the working with the different customers again there is no hard and fast rule which one is critical but that should be the guidance uh, which one supposed to be critical which one supposed to be the job capacity which one supposed to be the high yeah thanks sir and one last question is it possible to have uh, one single batch job run normal in the morning high in the evening and critical at the night time um technically yes right you can play with either batch group by moving that batch job or you can override it right but uh, there is no uh, you know there is, there is nothing in a scheduling mechanism that i put a priority based on uh, you know uh, the, the timing uh, priority is pretty defined on the batch group level can be overridden on the server level so technically possible but you will have to do a manually override of the priority yeah cards yeah thanks ajay i think this is what we had from a qna perspective um, if there is no more questions we should be able to close all right great thanks again guys uh, and of course thanks our audience uh, for joining us today uh, again we certainly hope the content uh, has proven useful and uh, as a reminder the recording for today's session will be available over on the tech talks community page uh, dynamics page Uh, within about five business days. Hope everyone has a great day. Take care.